Hi, I'm Bob from My Life in 75 Square Feet. Today I want to talk about the decision process that I use to buy my Ram Promaster 3500 extended high top cargo van that I used to create my new home on wheels. You know, after looking at van builds online and some videos, my requirements were pretty simple. I wanted a high top van. Hey, I want to be able to stand up in my home and I want an extended van because, hey, I want a little bit of room. I wanted to have a backup camera and I wanted to have some kind of rear sensor so it would alert me if I was going to hit something. That was it, pretty simple. The first van I drove was a Ram Promaster with a 159 inch wheelbase, high top extended. I probably only did this out of convenience because I was right next to the dealer and I said, hey, I'll go test drive the van. There were things I liked and things I didn't like. I liked that it drove pretty smoothly and the six cylinder gasoline engine seemed to have some power and torque. The thing I didn't like though the steering wheel felt a little awkward, and if it had a little bit of tilt to it, it might have been better. Out of all the cargo vans, this is the only one that was front wheel drive. I liked that that front wheel drive had a better turning radius than all the other ones. I had a few reservations about buying a Chrysler vehicle. I own four cars and two trucks, all Chryslers. I have to say though, the trucks were a lot better than the cars. The next van I tried was a Nissan NV cargo van. I had three Nissans previously, and I gotta tell you, I drove them to 125 to 130,000 miles, and the only thing I had to do to them, change the oil, change the tires, the brakes, and maybe a couple light bulbs or headlight here and there. Those cars drove just as good when I traded them in as when I bought them. I knew Nissan quality was good. And I really wanted a Nissan because it had a five year, 100,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. Now I didn't think the Nissan would need that warranty, but hey, it was a selling point that I wouldn't have much to worry about. When I went to the Nissan dealer and I saw the NV, the first thing I didn't like was how the top looked. It looked like they stuck a pencil eraser on top of the windshield. Whoever designed that, I don't know. It just didn't look right. The other part of it was they didn't make it in an extended version. It was only a short version. So I said, hey, I'm here already. I might as well test drive this thing. So I took it out on the road. It was a six cylinder gasoline engine and the power of that engine never got to the back tires because that thing couldn't get out of its own way. And then it made so much noise, I couldn't even hear myself thinking in that thing. You know, this was an easy decision. Strike one, Nissan NV, out. You know, after watching videos and blogs, I saw so many people use a Mercedes Sprinter van for their van build. So I went and I test drove a 170 inch high top extended. That's the biggest Mercedes you can get. It had a six cylinder Blue Tech diesel engine. I have to say, this van seemed to have more power and it drove the smoothest and quietest out of all the vans. So I thought, hey, this is the one to get. I went to the Ford dealer to try a Transit. Problem was, they just had too many packages and options. They didn't have the van that I wanted. They had one that was higher than a high top, and I didn't want that van. And it seemed like to get those extra packages and, and options, the prices were steep. And I had friends and family that had problems with Fords, and although I think out of the American three, Ford is the best, I still didn't want to take a chance with Ford. So that day, they didn't have what I wanted. I didn't test drive anything. So strike two, Ford Transit out. You know, I heard so many stories about Chevy. I remember when they built cars with undersized transmissions in them and had serious problems down the road with them. So I didn't even go to Chevy. 
I don't know why. So I'm not even giving them a strike. I just didn't go there. So I was finally down to the Pro Master and the Sprinter. Hey, I got two to choose from. And I went back and test drove each of them. You know, this time for some reason, the Pro Master steering wheel seemed perfect. Maybe it's because I drove the other vans. I don't know, but there was no problem with it. I still wasn't decided. So I went back to Mercedes and test drove that again. After that, I was pretty much sold. I wanted a Sprinter. So I was working with a friend that sold cars almost his entire career and he knew both dealerships and had friends at the dealership. So he worked a few deals for me. It turned out the ProMaster was actually a, a better financial deal. They were giving me $1,500 more for my Subaru Outback, but I still wanted the Sprinter, even though it was gonna cost me more money. Now that was until I talked to my friend, and what he found out was it was just too much money to maintain a Sprinter. And at that time, you gotta remember, you could only get the Sprinter with a Blue Tech diesel engine. Now that sent me on this internet search and I looked at videos and blogs and what I found out wasn't too attractive for Mercedes. The first thing I found out that some oil changes are gonna cost over a thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. The second thing I found out was this DPF, diesel particulate filter. It's in the exhaust system and it makes it so the exhaust is clean when it comes out there. You could put a handkerchief out there and you won't see any black soot. Well, this thing costs around $4,000 and somewhere around $100,000 it needs to be replaced. And it ends up being a large service because other things need replaced with it. I also found out there were three catalytic converters and six sensors in that exhaust system. And that was probably the other expenses when you replaced the DPF. So my friends at work told me, oh, the internet, you can't trust it. So I got a good idea. I called the service manager at the Mercedes dealer and I asked him what the maintenance would be on the van. Boy, was I shocked. He told me an oil change was recommended every 10,000 miles, even though the manual said 20,000 miles. And each oil change is about $175 to $200. He said every 20,000 miles, besides an oil change, the fuel filter and the air filter needed to be replaced. Now these filters are expensive, especially on diesel engines. He said at 40 and 60,000 miles, those would be big, expensive service charges. And he was talking $1,000 or more. And the final killer, oh, you guessed it, the DPF at around 100,000 miles would need to be replaced. And that's $4,000 just for that part. He didn't give me a price what that was going to cost, but he let me believe it was going to be a lot of money. So there you have it. Strike three. Mercedes Sprinter out. That only leaves the Ram Pro Master. And that's what I was going to get. You know, even though I made the decision to do this van life, I don't think I was really sold on it yet. And I think I had some serious reservations. I actually thought it was one of the craziest things I would ever do. And all this took place from the beginning ideas to test driving, to my design that I was doing, to buying. It was about five or six weeks. Things were moving fast. I still didn't think I had the guts to pull the trigger until this one Friday morning, I called the dealership and said I wanted to pick it up that evening. So at five o'clock when I was driving there, I swear I thought I was sweating blood, but I only know of one person that ever sweat blood. So I know I wasn't sweating blood, but you can guarantee I was stressed out. I was actually scared to death. When I was filling out the paperwork, the salesman even asked me, you don't even seem happy, what's wrong? I said, I think this is the craziest thing I ever did. I can't even believe I'm doing it. For some reason, I pulled the trigger 
and I drove away with the van along with the most stress I felt in years if not ever. As you can see in my videos, the rest is history and I've been happy living in my van for over a year now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You know, I encourage you to watch my other videos, especially my van tour and my build videos. I have given secrets in those build videos to help other people save money, save time, and not make the mistakes I made. I may even help you with your design. Also, I ask that you please subscribe to my channel and click the bell, ding, ding, so that you'll get notified of my new videos. And please watch the ads. Fair enough? If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Till next time.